fair question. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. I'm Vic Cohen, and it's a fair question. It's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair question. I'm Vic Cohen, and it's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair quest, quest, quest. Hey there, how you all doing? This is Vic Cohen on the show where it is always a fair question. That's right. There is no question that is ever off limits or that ever goes too far. Remember that, guest. I'm looking at our guest tonight. I remember, I remember, because I know you, yes. okay? <laughs> there's going to be nothing off limits tonight. Okay, okay, cool. Our guest, the lady I am speaking to, the mystery <laughs> lady, her name is Allie Barksdale. Hello, hello. Hello. I've known Allie. I've known you for over 10 years. Uh-huh. Allie is a TV producer. She's a show creator. She's also What show did I create? Actress. Well, you called me about doing something. <laughs> okay. That sounded like you oh, created yeah. I something. I created it. We did something. <laughs> I don't, you know, I still, it was very mysterious. You didn't tell me what it was, but you just said, I want, I'm pitching you. But I, I love it. So, okay. right? It that sounds cool. But isn't that true? Yes, Okay. definitely. You have worked with Joan Rivers, in case you have amnesia, but this is for <laughs> all of you watching. The late great, legendary. Each, that's right, Joan Rivers, uh-huh. Howie Mandel. Uh-huh. Um, the late Donald, great, hell, no, just God forbid. <laughs> okay. Donald Trump. Yes. Uh, Jesse Ventura. <laughs> yes, I forgot about that one. You went through my resume. Yes, Gloria Alred, yes. the attorney, and Vic Cohen. <laughs> the late, great. No. God forbid, <laughs> okay. you don't kill me. <laughs> yes. And you are a six-time Emmy-nominated Nominated. producer. Uh-huh, and I won a Peabody. You know, that sounds so impressive. Yeah, you're like, what the but fuck is a Peabody? I looked it up. I, I Googled it. it. It's too late. It's done. Okay. What is a Peabody? Okay. Because it sounds really impressive, and it sounds like it's something like you'd get if you worked at KCET. It doesn't yeah, sound like the kind of it. Hello. really. It Don't doesn't sound like the it. crap you work on. <laughs> so, <laughs> no offense, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. You what want was, me to talk about that show? I, I want you to talk about the show you got the Peabody on for about ten seconds. Okay. Well, Go. it was about. <laughs> it was what you should, we did it in Spanish and English, and in English it was a place of our own. In Spanish is Los Niños in su casa, and it's one of those PBS kind of things, and it was prestigious. For education. So Peabody's are uh, given for people who are making an education uh, difference? It was an educational kind of thing. And I don't know who George Peabody is, and everybody just Google it, because I'm still not sure. Okay. And I got a cute statue. Now, very nice. It, okay. You know, you got to get a statue. I got, I got a it cute one. So, briefly speaking with you, I didn't want to mm-hmm. go overdo it mm-hmm. in our pre-interview. Okay. But the sense I get is that you are in crisis, Older. Or were in crisis. I was. Very yeah. recently. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I want to get to that. And I'm coming out of it. Okay, good. And I'm mm-hmm. going to help you further okay. get out of it. Well, I don't know. With you, it may be... Uh, I might push you back okay. a Okay, <laughs> we may call the, the loony bin to come get me after this. No, that's impossible. <laughs> I'm very good. I will be okay. your um, I will be your unprofessional, your hobby <laughs> therapist, whatever okay. you call it. So let's just get into what what you've been doing all these years in television. Like, okay. why? First of all, why did you get into TV? What I did is I went back. To, I used to party down in the 80s in New York. Okay. Right? And I went to college. I went to this. Where'd you go to school? I went to Marymount Manhattan College, this really elite school. When Make I, sure you stay right in that mic. Really elite school. Sorry. Yeah. When, I, when I graduated from high school in Manhattan, because I'm from New York. Okay. And it was a great school, but I was like a party girl. So This I'm, is the high school or the college? This is your high school? I didn't party so much in high school, because in, okay. in you know, but in yeah, college I did. What do you mean by partying? Uh, partying, going to a place called the Paradise Garage, which a lot of people don't know about, but it's a house music place. And that was you in Manhattan? know about that. You're from Chicago. Yeah, you know about house music. But what was this in Manhattan? Yes, and the Paradise when, Garage is. In, Google it, boo. You have okay. Your we'll do that right later. Okay. I don't want to do that now. I got too much to talk about <laughs> with you. So when you say partying, were you doing hard drugs? When I say party, it's going to be, listen to music and dance. That's it. It's a, it more of an innocent. And you would do a little bit of drugs, but like not cocaine? like. I didn't like that. I've tried it, but I didn't okay. like it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So. But it was about the music. So, anyways, that. Mm. Sorry, keep Let's going. Let's get through because yeah. that's boring. Let's okay. get through it. So, <laughs> what, what was the question? Tell me so I'll get to the good part. Uh, uh, what got you into television? You said okay. you were been What got into me? Oh, yeah. Let me go. Let me speed it up. Was this only an hour show? Um, I was graduating from college. And I was so mad at my mom. And I didn't, didn't want to leave, live with her, so I moved in with a boyfriend. Okay. You know, and I needed to get a job. I'm not going to have a guy just take care of me. Yeah. So I started working at CBS on 57th Street in New York. Mm-hmm. And in, like, an accounting... Look, you look bored. No. Should I keep going? Keep going. Okay. In, in an not accounting office. I'm riveted. Okay. <laughs> I'm riveted. 
Okay, so I was working in an accounting office, and I would see other people working on shows, and they looked like they were having a ball. They, they were doing um, CBS This Morning. I think it was Another World. And this That's, is right out of school. Right. But I graduated later. You okay. know, I was like 24. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm working there at CBS, and they, they look like they're having fun, and I met a, a wonderful makeup artist, like in the lunchroom. They still had that. Yeah. So... He go and and I saw they had a sign up on the wall, Joan Rivers show needs a receptionist. So I'm like, what? So I talked to this um makeup artist and I go, well, I'm a college graduate receptionist. He's like, take that job. He's like, go in there, interview it for it. So, Did you interview with Joan herself? No, I interviewed with Sheila, who were still all Facebook friends. Okay, and this is about 25 years ago, right? So I get there, Sheila hires me. So the first day, I'm sitting there at the desk, right, as the receptionist, answering the phones. And so people were buzzing around because at the time, Joan had a stalker. Huh. So they were all going crazy. Oh, Lord, a stalker. Oh, this, oh, the stalker. And we're on 57th Street and 11th Avenue in, in Manhattan. And you're the first line of defense. Right. <laughs> Was Thank your you. desk right in the front of the office? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I wasn't, for some reason, I wasn't scared. Everybody else was. Right. They're like, oh, Lord, you don't. Da, da, da. So all day long, it was about till noon that was going on. So then they're like, here she comes. So Joan was walking in with her manager, Dorothy, and Vinny was her security guard, and she still had Spike back then. That's the dog? The, remember, she had a little York. I don't remember yeah, Spike. She, you almost as old as me, so come on now. <laughs> <laughs> she had a little doggy named Spike. Okay. So they all come walking in. And Joan just walks up to me. She went, hi, Allison. Just as sweet as can be. I'm like, hi, Joan. She's like, welcome. And just just a wonderful, warm woman. This Was was this her nighttime show? Or no, 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 daytime. Okay. It was a daytime show we did in New York. It started in, ooh, I moved here in 94, so that was 1990. And you did that for four years, right? Yes. Yeah. But there's more to this story. Go on, yeah. Okay, so she, she's talking to me and being all sweet. So people were all just scared about the stalker. So then Sheila comes up and goes, Joan, here's a picture of the stalker. Huh. And she went, he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when you knew what a wonderful fun, naturally fun lady she is. Did, she, did the stalker ever show up? No. Uh, okay, and it kind of uh, just went away. It just went away, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah. And she always was very kind to you? Oh, my gosh. I went to, I when I was still, I was younger and needed more money, so she would have um, parties at her house for Thanksgiving. And she was like, does anybody want to do code check and I'll pay you? So I said, I'll do it because I could use some extra money. Mm -hmm. So she has this beautiful townhouse well, um, is this the how the place she had when she passed away? Yeah, and I think supposedly so. it was very uh, uh, ornate Opulent. and yeah, it was like kind of like a king or queen's yes, type. Definitely, home. it was fantastic. Yeah, you know. So yeah, she Howard Stern came over when that, Howard and Robin came for Thanksgiving that night that year. And you were the coat check person. I was a coat check, and it wasn't nothing to coat. Nobody, everybody's like, I'm taking my fur with me when they went upstairs. <laughs> how much did you get paid? I don't remember. Did any of the people tip you? Any of the guests? No, because it was it was intimate. Yeah. It was more about, hi, come on in. You so know? This is like early 90s? Yeah. And so Howard Stern, anyone else interesting? Howard Robin. Um, who was the lady? There was a lady she used to always talk about. People from back then. I don't remember everybody's name. But we were like maybe 10 to 15 people, something like that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. She had a nice dinner. And then afterwards, after everybody left, she's like, Allison, come upstairs and sit down and let's just chit chat. And all of us, we just sat around. Uh, uh, the people that worked with her and me, and we're just laughing and laughing. And one of the people that came to the party, he he's a neighbor of hers. And his name was like Mr. Scragagachi or something like that. <laughs> and I'm like, Joan, what does Mr. Scragagachi do? She goes, we don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> so it was fun times at the Joan Rivers show. Yeah, I had so a great time. Did you leave because the show just was canceled? Uh, I got an offer to come out here to work to L.A. to work on a show. What was it uh, called? The Mike and Maddie show. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, just a talk little show. bit. Daytime yeah. talk Daytime show. Daytime talk show. Right? You heard of it? Yeah, I remember it well. Mike Berger. Yeah, as a 
Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, totally. So yeah, I came and worked on that. Do you ever regret that you did? No. Shut up, silly. <laughs> because I mean, you know, Joan Rivers is so iconic, and uh, you, wasn't there? A possibility of moving up within the Joan Rivers empire? Well, it, I was working on a talk show and I was going to be a producer and I wanted to expand my life. Did you want to move to Los Angeles? Is that part of the plan? I had never thought about it until, I can't say his name, but he's pretty famous right now and called me to come and work out here on Mike and Maddie. Why can't you say who called you? I don't want to say. It was a long time ago. Yeah. It's he, a fair question. He's doing pretty good right who now. Who called you? Very positive. <laughs> He's a producer. Yeah. But why is that so hard? Like, Because there's a lot of stuff. You know what I'm going through in, well, in my life right now. So I'm like, I got to shut up a little bit. Okay, so yeah. Barry, who's a really prolific, uh, uh-huh. and, I, and I don't know him personally, but I'm sure he's a very nice man. So yes. he called you uh-huh. and um, he was doing the show. Because uh-huh. and, and we worked on Joan Rivers together. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah. So that's, how, that's the best way to come out to Los Angeles. <laughs> and you've never left. Is that right? I never left. Yep. Now, it's kind of crazy when I looked at your resume Mm because you are all over the map. I mean, you've done so much. Mm -hmm. But what is it with you and court shows? I mean, come on. Okay. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me just read for all of you. Okay. We've got America's uh, Court with Jesse Ventura, Uh America's Court with Judge Kevin Ross, (laughs) We the People with Gloria Allred, Justice for All with Christina Perez, (laughs) Supreme Justice with Judge Kareem Mills Francis. Okay. (laughs) And he's, oh, Karen. Karen. I said Karen. <laughs> Karen. <laughs> what the hell is with you? Is it just once you start, you can't stop? Well, this is what happened. When I was working on, let me think, what was I working on? Huh. I worked on the Lisa show after Mike and Maddie. So then... This is Lisa Gibbons. Lisa Gibbons, yes. I worked on that. And that was also a daytime talk show. Yes. So okay. I did a lot of stuff on that and met great people that I'm still friends with, great producers I'm still friends with today. And then... What's Lisa up to? Counting your money from all those Thank shows? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. She was okay. fantastic. Also, yeah. Yeah. she always seemed very sincere. Nice and... lady to work for. You know? And she did a show called John and Lisa. Yes. With John Tesh. <laughs> uh-huh. But this was a different show. Right. John it's, was yeah. no longer there. There was no more John. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, and my old supervising producer was the producer on that. But anyway, that's what we do in this business. You just kind of like move around, especially older people like us. I'm 52 going on 53. Now, why do you say your age? Because so many people are afraid to do that in this business. Well, I'm I'm 52. Yeah, I, that's how old I am. When people ask me my age, uh-huh. I say I play 35 to 47. Uh-huh. I play 52 to 510. Uh-huh. I play 130 pounds to 170 pounds. So you don't say pounds. the exact thing. Yeah. <laughs> I give ranges. Yeah, yeah. You don't care how old you could be. A three-year-old asking yeah. me how old I am. But you're my friend, and I'm sitting here with you. I so know. I no, I'm tell just you. curious because <laughs> there is. You've noticed there's some people, yeah. particularly in the entertainment. Lots business, of people, yeah. You know, but you're very open. I don't about roll that. like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Because so, I don't want anybody to feel bad about how old they are. Yeah, well, I think that's, that's important. That's to great. Me. So, yeah. um, so this whole thing with the court stuff, okay. you kind of fell into it, and right. one show led to another, which right. led to another. I started working at Divorce Court, and then what else did I do? Another show for them, for those producers, and then left. And those, the, the ones you just mentioned, except for the Je- Jesse Ventura, they, they're all I did with Byron Allen. Okay, yeah. now for those of you watching and listening who don't know who Byron Allen is, he's I've been told one of the wealthiest people in Hollywood. Mm. He has his own production company. Right. And he's very prolific in his in what they put out. He has out. a business sense, a really great business sense. He started as a comic. Uh-huh. Yeah. With Johnny Carson. I didn't know that. When he was like 18. Okay. Yeah, there's footage of him doing his uh, act at like 18 on Johnny Carson. How long, uh, would you say that was your most recent long-term job? Yeah. Yep, it and, was. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how long was that? How long? That was about Byron? four years. And how involved was Byron in his company very so you were face to face with him a lot oh yeah very hands-on it's a family business it's him his mom and his uncle you know and they're very hands-on yeah he's there every day you know and for those of you who don't know byron allen if you just google the guy um you'll see what ali's talking about as far as you'll see some old footage of him doing Mm stand-up but you'll be blown away by all the tv shows he's done and uh very likely you've been, it'd be almost impossible not to have seen something he's done. Right. Because it's the kind of thing you'll be up when you come home from the club late at night and three o'clock in the morning, there he is interviewing people. He's made a lot of money <laughs> off of these, um, they call them press junkets, uh-huh. where there'll be a reporter talking to stars of a mm-hmm. film. 
and you'll see like the movie poster behind the, the right. guest and and uh, Byron. Yeah, that's a producer, Mike, that does that. Um, yeah, a producer. Part of me. His name is Mike. Okay, that the does name. That. Does, yeah, right. the producer that does that. So I think Byron. That was kind of the bread and butter of the company, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it would come like Hollywood, something right or other. Right now, I or? think the court shows are. Oh, okay. Bit, but ba- yeah. I'm talking early days. Yeah. I think that my recollection is that's how it started, okay. or at least that's how he got on the map. Well, it's been for almost 20 years he had the company. Have you been to his house? Never. Mm-mm. What, does he, what kind of car does he drive? Oh, Bentley. Does he? Yeah. Convertible? Nice one. With a baby seat in the back. Convertible? It wasn't convertible. <laughs> <laughs> Was not. No. Couldn't afford it. See? <laughs> you silly. <laughs> what color? Black. <laughs> new? It was new, yes. But I haven't worked here in a while, so I don't know what he has right, right now. You know? Was, is he, uh, what kind of guy is he? Very diplomatic, you know. And he, very funny. And he wants the room to feel comfortable. But the wheel, you can always see the wheel spinning. He's always thinking what am I doing next? Is he a genius? I think so. Do you think that, uh, I understand his mother had started the company. Right, his mom, yeah. Was she, a, she was a publicist, is yes. that right? she worked at NBC. Yep. Do you think that he got lucky in a way because his mother had already set the groundwork for no, him? No, I wouldn't say that's luck. I think it's hard work from both of them. Okay. Yeah. And how luck. do they get along? Pretty good from what I see. She's his partner. You know, mm-hmm. but also I don't know people's dynamics. Look at me and my mother. Ooh, you'd be like, Ugh. so I don't, you know. But they seem fine to me. But you were there four years. Yes. Okay. And how many shows? You must have worked on a ton of shows. Uh, yeah, then. it's like a hundred and something because we were doing all the court shows you mentioned, and it would we would do like fourteen segments a day. So you've got this great job. Mm. You're working with someone who's huge in the business. Uh-huh. Did you get benefits? No. But that's how it Even is. Even after four years? Mm-mm. Some give benefits. Yeah, no, I'm not, yeah. Is I'm it, used to not getting them. Was he generous in pay? Okay, did you see the Mets game the other day? N- no. <laughs> what do you mean by My that? My joke just tanked. <laughs> They're not playing. <laughs> is that the joke? So it was a little tight? A little tight. Have you seen a, a Real Housewives lately? <laughs> <laughs> So there was no money? No, there's money. No. I was able to live and survive. Okay, yeah. but you're but not getting rich over there. It was um, competitive to the what everybody else is making when in what we're doing now. Competitive to like E, which is notoriously on the lower end of pay? I wouldn't say that, but I see there's so many people also, and I'm very upfront about this when I say my age. When you get a little bit older, they don't call you as much because I'm like a dinosaur. And they think that I'm going to want so much money, mm. you know? So if I need a job, I'm going to take a gig. Right. And Byron gave me what was appropriate for him and his company. Okay. So you, you were know? satisfied with yeah. that. So why did you leave? Um, I got tired. You know, I was busting my ass and just drinking too much and just wanted to go. Were you... Asked to leave, or no. did you quit? Uh-uh. I wasn't asked to leave. I did you were too much. forced. It wasn't even an asking. It was, get out of here. No, not at all. So you decided it was just time. Yeah. yeah. That must have been a hard choice. I was tired. Like I said, I was drinking a lot. What's a lot? Uh, every day, every night. Yeah. When you'd get up in the morning, would you have a drink? Not before I went to work, but definitely after work. Yeah. And how many drinks? Like, what would be a typical night? Ooh. Um, a bottle of, like, Taka, which is this real cheap one you can buy. Yeah. But it was a lot. Just, a whole bottle? Yeah. In but a not, a, not a big one, but, like... A, and a whole night in a night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And would you drink to black out? Yes. hmm Did you ever wake up um, having vomited and, like, you could have no, died? No, no. That- but what you do is when you go through alcoholism like that, you get the shakes. And your body starts really wanting it. You... Um, it's like a withdrawal. If you don't have more yes. inside? Mm-hmm. So yeah. would you say you're an alcoholic? Oh, yeah. Okay. When, when did you figure well, that no, out? Well, no, I'm not an alcoholic because they go to the meetings. I'm a drunk. You would say that right now? <laughs> That's my joke that I stole from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you never heard that one before? No, but it's, <laughs> I'm being very serious right now. Okay. 
Okay. I'm actually concerned for you. Okay. You know, Thank you, babe. Yeah, so I'm kind of in that headspace. Okay. Because it sounds like a serious thing. It is serious. Now you. But if I, I keep yeah. it so serious, that's not good for me. Because okay. I was in a place where it's supposed to be so serious, and then that's when I start freaking out. Okay. Yeah. So when we were on Deal or No Deal, uh-huh. um, you were on that for a number of years. It was a lot. Were you well, there? not as long as you, but. Right, but yeah. you were there close to, from the beginning to the end? I didn't get there at the beginning. Yeah. About a year later. Okay, so yeah. you were there probably like two and a half, almost three years. Yeah. Okay. And so on that show, you were a producer. And for uh-huh. those of you who don't remember, Deal or No Deal was that game show on NBC, a primetime show with 26 models. Mm-hmm. And there was a banker and Howie Mandel was the host. And I was the writer and you were one of the producers. Uh-huh. And um, we had a great time. Yes. But I do remember towards the end, uh-huh. you, you, there was one night where you drank. Right. I was and, spiraling out of control. And that night you spanked the executive the producer. spanked Scott St. John. You went in his office. You remember? <laughs> yeah. I you was don't forget stuff up. like that. I was going to bring it up. Oh, you, you didn't remember? Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. You went in his office and you spanked him. Uh-huh. And I think he was like, what in the hell was that? <laughs> no, I think he liked it. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you you were gone soon after. I left. You quit. Yeah. They didn't fire me. They didn't. Why did you quit? No. Because I was drinking too much. And it wasn't fair to the staff and the production. Were you embarrassed? Is that why you quit? No. I just, I had to take care of me. And I think I sent you guys an email saying, you know what, I have to deal with this. But I didn't know what you did to deal with it. What did you do? Oh, I took some time off and just said, let me figure out what's going on in my life. And what am I so depressed about? Why do I need to black out? Right. Yeah. So I didn't take the steps right away to do everything, but I took some time off. So what did you figure out? Um, Then? Yeah. About that I'm drinking too much. As far as, like, why you black, were blacking out and why uh, you were depressed, did you come up with some answers well, back yeah. then? Yeah, one of the main things is my dad passed 10 years ago. And, okay. And, uh, is this interesting to me? Yeah, it is. Okay. You sure? Yeah. Okay. My dad this passed. This is real. Okay. My dad passed. Now, you know, I'd rather talk about this than just okay. your resume. Okay. But, yeah, this that's is real. Boring. Okay. My dad passed 10 years ago, and he left me a lot of money. And okay. I was like, I didn't expect it. What's a lot? A half a million dollars? I'm not going to say all that. It's a fair question. Uh, yeah, but I'm not. Yeah, but it don't mean I got to answer it. Okay. Billion? Million? <laughs> I'm not going to say. Okay, but, so um, a lot of money. It was a lot of money that I wasn't used to. Okay. And he hadn't taught me how to invest in all that stuff. So it's not about the money. It just was the loss that really hit me. The loss of your father. Yeah. And also going through when you struggle with depression, like I've gone through depression my whole life. So that compounded with you want to drink to make yourself not depressed and it makes you worse. Right. So it was all that on top of each that other. That was back then? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then um, I did. You, you gave me a hint, but mm. we didn't really get into it because I wanted to save it for our show, that you did. You went into rehab yes. more mm-hmm. recently. Yeah, I went to rehab last April. Yeah, and I checked myself in and some beautiful friends in the, in, in the entertainment community helped me go in and it, it helped. It did help. What what was going on, like, that you needed help getting in and, and what was going on in your life? Well, it wasn't one of those, like, uh, well. It was time. Yeah, yeah. I had lost everything. I lost my condo. Remember I had that beautiful Range yeah, Rover? Marina, well, you were living in Marina Del Rey yes, in a high-rise. I lost my condo, yeah. I wasn't in a high-rise then. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I lost my condo. When you say you, because you couldn't pay, make the payments? Yeah, mm-hmm. because I was getting drunk and not keeping up with my responsibilities with mm-hmm. my money. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Yeah. So that that so you kind of hit a bottom, yes. as they say. Mm-hmm. And I so did. so was it the losing of the condo that, and and just the whole kind of craziness of life that yes, you couldn't handle. It was just too much. It was too much. Yep, I and couldn't this, handle it. And this was only like a year and a half ago. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. Great. Exactly. I mean, I don't mean great. I mean great that you're, you're you seem so great now. <laughs> yeah. That it was only a year and a half ago. Uh-huh. So you go, you go, what's that like when you check in? Now, was this one of these ritzy Malibu No, it wasn't of- one of those on the beach. And it's a very, the price is wonderful, but the place was fantastic. What and was I the wish price? I could say the name, but it's part of AA and it's okay. Al- Alcoholics Anonymous. But it was a wonderful place. Was this a frou-frou celebrity place? Mm. Well, the celebrity was Allison Barksdale. Of Who course. <laughs> They've had celebrities, yeah, but it wasn't like the ones that are like thirty thousand dollars a a week. What were you paying? You be, I don't want to say that because it'll give too much of who it is. Was it more than a ten thousand a week? 
<laughs> no, it was less. Okay. Is it a celebrity place? Though you said it kind of, there are celebrities that go there. Were there horses? Were you horseback riding? No. Okay. Mm -mm. Swimming pool? Mm -mm. Jacuzzi? Mm -mm. Come on, Allie. No. What was there that, what, what was the, what is it that you found to, you really enjoyed about it? Was it was a beautiful mansion and the way they treated everyone. It's like, we care about you, you know? And the kind of care we got was like being with a family that cares about you and wants to make sure you're okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how long were you there? For 90 days. It's a long time. Yeah. Yep. 90 days. And I'm imagining you had therapy? Yes. Yeah. And was that every day? Not every day, but we would have um, we would have activities we would do, but we would go to AA meetings twice a day. Well, not twice a day. We'd have a meeting at the house, and then we'd go out to AA meetings. Yeah. A van would take you? Yeah. So it was very controlled living. Yeah, yeah, right? definitely, yeah. And then what did you do with all your stuff that was here? Did you put it in storage? Or? Yes, I put all my stuff in storage, yeah. And did you, were you allowed to have friends visit you? Yes, and oh, yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. I had some great friends. My dogs came. Remember my dogs? Yeah. The Scotty? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what did you learn, like, what, after 90 days? Uh -huh. That I'm a crazy fucked up bitch. <laughs> <laughs> did, you didn't know that? You knew that before. I you didn't know that. <laughs> you just had it confirmed. Okay, I had it confirmed, <laughs> yeah. Just it got me in touch with, like, what are you so upset about? Why do you want to black out? It totally gets you in touch with all that stuff. And what did yeah. you discover? Um, I'm still working on it, to be honest with you. Was some of it about your father, the connection with your father? My father died. My mom died three years ago today. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's a lot. So, yeah. And I'm an, well, my, my mom's only child. So it was a lot for me. Well, it doesn't sound like maybe a coincidence that you had this kind of break uh -huh. in, in reality or, or right. this breakdown or whatever you want to call it. So close to your mother yeah, I think passing, it was like right? My third nervous breakdown. <laughs> yes. So do you think that it's the first one was around your father's loss, uh -huh. and the second one was around your mother's loss? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Well, the good news is you only had two parents, right? <laughs> <laughs> There's no step parent out there, right? <laughs> no, but if she dies, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Screw her. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Well, you know, you um, you're such a sweet person, and you're such a uh, a love loving nature mm -hmm. about you. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I know you were surprised when I told you. You're like, what? Well, I was surprised because um, because I suspected that that there was something going right. on. Right. When you're spanking your boss. Yeah. Okay. Your married boss. And, <laughs> you know, it is TV, but still, we still have some like harassment. Some decorum. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Not a lot, but some. <laughs> okay. Um, but the part that had me more concerned. Mm -hmm is when I said to you how to go and you said it didn't work. <laughs> That's going to be my book. And it's not about it doesn't work for everybody. It Maybe I wasn't ready. Yeah. You know, but it definitely calmed me down because I had a point where I was What just, calmed you down? The rehab? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I had a point where I was getting up every day just drinking and drinking and drinking and not wanting to deal with life. So I'm not there anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'll just... So what's changed? Um, when you hit rock bottom, you have to take care of yourself more, mm -hmm. you know, when you lose your inheritance, you, you got to get up and take care of yourself. So, yeah. You yeah. Know. Do you think you've always had depression? Yeah. Oh, no, I don't think I know. Did It, it runs did in my family. Did it go untreated? Um, I tried to work on it a little bit, but didn't really focus on it because I worked so hard. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't become a producer, just like not do it, you know. No, the hours are crazy. Because you look at what we do, yeah. and you just work hard, and then you just forget about it. Well, it can you know? be workaholism or getting lost in work, yeah. especially in TV producing, yeah. mm -hmm. is an easy distraction. Right. And it becomes right. an addiction, uh -huh. almost. Exactly. Yeah. So one you replaces the other. You kind of counseled me one day at work. Oh. Do you that's remember? Nice. I don't remember that. You did. No, but... <laughs> you did. Yeah. You're like, maybe you need to do this and that. You were wonderful. Oh, well, that's nice to hear. Good. I'm happy it was helpful. I you were. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. That's good to hear. So you um, have been out of that rehab for how long? Since um, last... You said April? June. June. Okay. So June, July, August, mm -hmm. about eight months or mm -hmm. nine months, something like that? Okay. And you're, you said you've, you have a noticeable change. Oh, yeah. Are you taking medication? I've always done that. Okay. Sure. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a believer in, I think that for addiction, like uh-huh. I know lots of people who, you know, battle addiction. And I think that the way, the, the way I've, only way I've seen people really get out of it is, well, well, they say, first of all, you have to hit bottom. Mm-hmm. And they say, when you hit bottom, mm-hmm. it's when you stop digging. Mm-hmm. And everyone has their own bottom. Do you think you've hit bottom? I did hit bottom, but I'm coming up. I'm digging back up. And it's so funny that you say that, Vic, because when I was in the house, we'd have meetings. And the first meeting, when you're your first meeting, they ask you about you in front of everybody. And How kept, many people? It's, well, all the, the people in the house. Is that 10 people? Or? It was about 10. Yes, okay. Exactly. You know, and the, the doctor in the house and the, yeah, it was wonderful. And they're like, he's like, you hit rock bottom. And I just didn't want to say it. You know, and I was. And he was encouraging body. you to yeah, because right. he'd already met with you. Yeah. And- well, he hadn't already met me, but he knew my circumstance. Okay. And he's like, "You hit rock bottom." I'm like, "It ain't rock bottom," because you know me, I'm always trying to be positive about yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, with you right now, I can say, "Yeah, it was rock bottom." Yeah. You know. But I don't know if it really was. Uh-huh. It was rock bottom then to get you into rehab. But if you're still drinking now, uh-huh. then it makes me wonder if you need to lose more. To be honest. And I'm not saying that as a way of criticizing you. Right. But usually when it's bottom, it means you're you're done digging. Well, for me... And the, I'm just concerned if you're drinking still. The but, lifestyle, like when you go to AA meetings and stuff... Yeah. I don't like those meetings. Yeah. I, I leave depressed. Mm. You know, so I'm trying to do stuff, other things to find out. Have you gone to the, uh, a variety of meetings? Yes. Because they're so different. Everybody says that. Yeah. Do you go to the ones and like I? I've and this been is everywhere. A, I have a friend who's an AA, uh-huh. and he took me to a meeting uh, where Alec Baldwin spoke. Uh-huh. Now I'm saying that not, I'm not breaking in anonymity. It's well, well known. Well, you just well, yeah, he talks about it. Yeah, it's uh-huh. public knowledge. Uh-huh. And um, but it was a huge meeting, and you know, there's each meeting has its own mm-hmm. personality. So that's why I was asking. Right, I like, know exactly. You know. Everybody tells me that, and just I think what happens is you know the way AA originally started. Mm-hmm. It was with... Have you been? Are you an alcoholic? No, I'm not. Okay. But I'm very familiar with it. Okay. The way AA started was, you know, in the earliest of days, yes. it, was, it was for the worst of the worst drunks. Uh-huh. These are people who were in hospitals often. Remember, I had to hear this every day you know, for And they were going to die. You know, and so over the years, the, hot, the bottom mm. has gotten higher. <laughs> okay. You know, yeah. where you don't have to lose everything. Uh-huh. But for some people, they do. Right. And even, or they need to be in the hospital uh-huh. going through detox. Uh-huh. You know, but... It's a, it's a mystery to me uh-huh. what gets someone to turn it around. Uh-huh. You know, like how much? It's right. There's no yeah. formula. I think that AA definitely works. Okay? Definitely. But it's that may not be the right thing for me. Yeah. You know, I'm not saying anything against AA. No, I don't, hear, I don't hear that at all. Yeah, but yeah. it may not be the right thing for me. And then just, well, I'll work through it. You're still doing therapy? No therapy right now, but I need to. Because yeah. I think that, yeah, I always feel like for me, like, I, I mean, I'm, I mm-hmm. deal with depression. Mm-hmm. And you do? I would never know. You never told me that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I've had it for years. Okay. So I, I you have take a, anything? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I take um, Cymbalta. Okay. And uh, I take Ritalin sometimes. Okay. Gotcha. Because a lot of people don't know this, but an off-label use mm-hmm. of Ritalin mm-hmm. Is for hard to treat, hard to treat depression. Okay. Fortunately, my depression's never gotten to the point where I'm suicidal. Thank okay. God. Gotcha. But it's been persistent. Where at times it can it can affect me in my productivity. From and when you're younger, from when you're little. I think when I was when I was a little boy, mm-hmm. I was really anxious at times. Okay. And I had this lot of separation anxiety. Okay. Outwardly, much like you are, mm-hmm. I was very social. Right. Very verbal. We wanted the whole room fun. to feel good and love us. Yeah, and yeah. I was very. You would never know. I was uh-huh. articulate. Uh huh. But when I'd be home at night and I'd be home in bed and lonely, mm-hmm. I was anxious right. and, and I couldn't fall asleep and I'd be scared. And I mean, I claimed all through my childhood that I slept with my eyes open <laughs> because I was afraid of the dark. Okay. And I gotcha. asked a therapist, I go, is that possible? Mm-hmm. And he said, yes. Okay. Can you imagine walking into the bedroom and the kids like sleeping like that? <laughs> I'd be scared Little to death. Vic. Oh yeah. Okay. This is funny. Um, yeah. I was, I'm the oldest as okay. I think I mentioned. I'm not sure if I did, but, um, I was uh, about maybe, I'm guessing I was like four or five. And my middle brother, Michael, who's three years younger than me, mm-hmm. I was so um, uncomfortable one night at that age um, that Did I you went- share a room? No, he had a separate room. Okay. I went in his room and I would sh- I shook his crib. 
<laughs> so that he would cry. You shook and the it baby's would, crib. Yeah, and it would wake my parents up. <laughs> And then I'd fall asleep like an angel, like I, you know, I was just so happy and relieved because I knew they were up. Okay. But gotcha. they must have thought he was the worst baby. <laughs> I'd go in there and then sneak back in my room. <laughs> yeah. But um, I never did therapy as a kid. Okay. You know, Me and, neither. And, Not as a kid. As yeah. As an adult. But as a yeah. grown up, um, I found it, I've done all kinds of therapy, uh -huh. you know, cognitive behavioral therapy uh -huh. where I reframe my thinking. Okay. And you know, that, I remember you telling me stuff like that, but you didn't say you did it. Oh yeah, but you were like, well, I wasn't try trying this, to keep it a that. secret. Okay, I don't right. think it was meant to. Right. I, I'm very okay. open about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think it's a a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we take care of our bodies. Many of us, mm -hmm. people, you know, they want to get their six pack or they want to be the right mm -hmm. way. They're going on diets, mm -hmm. but why is it that we don't do the same kind of work on our mental health? Right. Or, because we need uh, to. Yeah. No Everybody one comes does. in with a six pack in the mental world. Right. Right. I don't think, right. you know, so, uh, yeah, I, I love therapy mm -hmm. and I think, and the, the medicine helps because it will help, it helps the therapy, mm -hmm. you know, it lifts my mood. I believe in it. So, but I've never had a, an antidepressant that has been like the magic pill. Right. I don't think there really is a There's magic not, pill. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I've tried a lot of different stuff, uh -huh. all those okay. SSRIs, uh -huh. but nothing really I worked. My, I do my Prozac, yeah. Yeah, Prozac didn't really work for me. Right. I tried Lexapro, okay. I tried um, all kinds of stuff. Uh -huh. And I'm always, I've always been amazed how in that world with uh, the antidepressants, mm. they're kind of like throwing darts against a wall. Right. They're like, let's see how this works. Your doctor works. doesn't, yeah, they don't know. They don't right? know entirely. I mean, right. they know if you're like schizophrenic, you would take this. Right. If you're major depression, mm. you would do this. And my mm. diagnosis was more like dysthymia, which mm. is like a low-grade constant okay. depression. But it can still be disruptive. Okay. So, um, so you're, are you planning to get back into therapy? Is that something? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Okay. Yeah. Now, I understand... You're now acting. Uh-huh. I'm trying to act. And I'm starting from the bottom. Was that a result of doing this this 90-day rehab? Yeah, because I was thinking about my career in television as a producer, and I, I was so stressed. And always in the back of my mind, I'm like, I want to act. And I'm always coaching other people on acting and working with actors. When you're producing them. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me just right now, I'm, I'm blessed that I can take the time and try to do that. So what can we see you in? Are you online anywhere? Yes. Or on shows? What are you on? Oh, it's so, I'm not on something steady. Like okay. I said, I went to the bottom. Except Prozac. <laughs> okay. Well, exactly. <laughs> I went to the bottom. Like for us, like having the audience, we, you know, we have a, people that book the audience yeah. and all that for me in my whole career. That's been a whole different department. I've been doing audience work. Like I, you'll sit in the audience. Yes. And you get paid to sit in the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and a lot of people recognize me. They're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, right now, this is what I need to do. Right. You know, just to calm down and not be so stressed out. So there's no um, sense of pride. Like in other no, words. No, not really. It's, a little bit with other things, but not with that. Mm -mm. I know? think you should drive an Uber. <laughs> I would do that. I'd consider that. I'm out the worst driver. But if you'd be so fun. I'm the worst driver. No one would want to be dropped off. Okay. They'd want to just keep driving with you. Yeah, I'm the worst driver. Okay, right. so forget that. Okay. So, um, remember it, how much my Range Rover, I would crash it up? I don't remember that. Okay. <laughs> so as far as the acting goes, is that is this just something you're toying with or is this something you've always wanted to do since you're a little I've girl? I've always and, wanted to do. And I'm toying with it and also trying to be the kind of person that I'm still a producer. You know, just because I went to rehab doesn't mean I'm not a producer. That's how well, I'm I don't wired. think, th no, that probably would make you a better producer. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I've been doing is trying to see how I can mesh it all and get all so, my you know, ideas. Produce your own stuff. Yes. That exactly. you're on camera. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. And produce other people. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, so. And um, now I understand that you've worked with one of our presidential um, candidates, or at least in the primaries. <laughs> yes. With and Donald would, Trump. <laughs> Yeah, tell me, what, where, how did you end up working with Donald Trump and what was that like? This was about, oh gosh, not 20, about 15 years ago. And I was working with, a, I was freelance. I had finished working with the Lisa show and a friend called me and said, um, do you want to work on the Miss Universe pageant? I'm like, hell yeah. So they flew us to, where was it the first time? I think it was Cyprus. And Donald Trump was oh the president God, what a, of the organization. That is an amazing... Yeah. And we'd lived there for a month, nice. you know, and we I worked on the Miss Universe, Miss USA, and Miss Teen USA for three years straight. And it was fantastic. That was full-time work? Well, no. Mm -mm, just to for a month. It'd be a hiatus? Yeah. Oh, for a month. Just okay. for a month each. And you'd fly somewhere crazy? Yep. Went to Shreveport, Bossier, Louisiana, about 
five times. That's where we would do Miss Teen USA. Miss USA, we did, um, I think it's Shreveport also. But I've been to Hawaii, Israel, Egypt, um, Cyprus, a lot of great places. And it was when Donald Trump was the president of the organization. And who was the uh, com- production company? It was, well, my friend Susan Winston. It was her and Dan Funk. They're, if you're in TV, you'll know their names. Okay. Um, but that's who I worked with at the time, was with them. And that's who hired me. And we had some great times. Yeah. And But Donald Trump would always be there and just be really cordial and a nice man. And I remember the last night in Cyprus after the pageant, they rented out a suite, and it was all the, they, they don't say contestants, it was all the delegates. It was all of us and the producers and just having a nice Why time. Why don't they call them contestants? They think that's cheesy? That's a thing cheesy? that they have. That's a thing they have. Okay. They're called delegates. Yeah. I'm still going to call them contestants. <laughs> so <laughs> we were all in the room. Donald Trump was there and a nice man. And I also remember him from Joan. And he and Joan were good friends. Oh, yeah? Did he come over to the house a lot? or, or I'm not sure or about no? that. But, but just um, from her show, her daytime show. Right. Right. So who? what's the difference between the Donald Trump you knew then mm-hmm. versus the one you see now? Well, I didn't know him, clearly. And I right. didn't know he'd be spewing all this venom, you know. So it surprised you? Yeah, definitely. He was also on Deal or No Deal. Do you remember that? Was I there? I don't know, but I, I thought you were. But okay. yeah, he was there and um, he actually ended up fixing up one of the models with a friend of his <laughs> who is now a star pitcher for the Boston Red Sox. <laughs> Number, um, <laughs> I'm trying to remember her name. I might have I'm been I'm drawing there. a blank. But okay. anyways. You knew all the models. Hello. <laughs> well, I was friends with them. Yes. I mean, but that was just, it was all innocent. Well, why not? Okay. Well, they were nice. Yes. I mean, you were working with, it was like working they with everyone. They were very nice to me. They were, the whole crew when we were there was so nice. Loved it. Yeah. They were fantastic. That was fun. And um, so now you said you're 52? Yeah, I'll be 53 in July. Okay, great. And now you came here with a gentleman. Mm-hmm. And I'm just wondering, <laughs> his name's Joe. I'd say he's, um, if this would be a May-December type relationship, as I say. It was January, December. <laughs> and uh, now tell me about Joe. What's going on with you and Joe? Joe is my buddy that rescued me after I got out of rehab. And what does that mean, he rescued you? Um, I was like calling friends, can I stay with you? Can I stay with you? And people were like, no, no, no. And Joe was like, well, you can come stay here. But how did you know Joe to call him? Uh, what? Come on, this is like, <laughs> that is not a crazy question. It's a great question, but it's funny. So tell us. I met him through friends. Craigslist? <laughs> no. You told me that Joe was your sugar daddy <laughs> without the sugar. He's my daddy no bucks. <laughs> so how did you meet him? What friends? <laughs> I don't want to say. Come on. I don't want to say. Please. Because I want to seem like those cool stars that don't say. Come on, but, we want to uh, know. No, because I'm one of my, my aunts will kill me. Okay, so. I have a family that will kill me. <laughs> okay. So you and Joe, mm-hmm. you've been, do you live with Joe right now? Yes. So he's your living boyfriend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys are a couple. We're a couple. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. So this is real. This is real. Mm-hmm. Now Joe's a bit older than you. <laughs> no, bitch. He's, you said he's my dad's age. He's about 65, 8? 60. 70? 75? 80? 78? Well, ask him how old he is. Or is he 78? 6. 76. Uh-huh. And you're 50, so it's 24 years? He's, he's my dad's age. Do you, and this is a fair question. During lovemaking, do you call him daddy? <laughs> That's a yes. No, it ends up that he chases me around the bedroom. I believe I'm that. I'm like, look, I'm tired. <laughs> I believe that. Okay. <laughs> you know, he walks around, he's wearing a baseball cap. He's like a security guard. Well, he is. That's what he does for a living. <laughs> <laughs> he's guarding you like, you know, your important piece of property. I mean, you know. So you and Joe, so you come out of rehab, uh, some mysterious thing which you don't want to share because of family relations. I met him on the bus. Is that true? You met him on the bus. Yes, it's true. I wouldn't make that up. How'd you meet him on the bus? No, the bus stop. He was just sitting at a bus stop? (laughs) And you were sitting next to him? And you said, I need a place to live? (laughs) 
He said, let's Kinda go back. sort of, though, when you think about it, Nick. <laughs> I mean, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> okay. So he was, 76. <laughs> so he's taking the bus, and you're taking the bus. I was taking the bus. Remember, I lost all my nice cars. Okay. Right, and I went to go visit. Um, what nice cars besides the Range Rover? Do you have another car? I had a car? Benz, too. You had a Mercedes, too? Good. Really? Wow, okay. So... Did you have to go bankrupt? Was this like that bad? Like credit card go, maxed out and no the whole? Credit, no credit cards, but I bought a really expensive condo in the marina. So you had to foreclose on that? Yeah. So then your credit was also destroyed? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Well, so why not max out the cards if you're going all out? I don't, I never had credit cards. That's great. Well, good. I never did that. That's good. Just I wasn't serious. Card, but, yeah. Okay. So you, you meet Joe. You're out of rehab. How many days after you're out of rehab? Let me think. He knows better than I do. Uh, it was soon, within a week or two? I think so. Yeah. So what I'm really impressed with, Ali, with mm-hmm. you is um, it's, it had to have been, like, incredibly humbling. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, just to have lost this gorgeous place you mm-hmm. lived in, the marina. Mm-hmm. And for those of you who don't know, the marina is, like, uh, the marina is, like, upscale. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's on water. It's mm-hmm. on the west side. And um, you'd lived there for years. How many years? 21. 21 years. So there's this identity and the history, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I live in a condo, and there's a certain sense of if you can get if you get lost in it, it could be dangerous. Mm-hmm. So, but that's gone, mm-hmm. and I'm not saying you did get lost in it, but you're gone with that. Right. You're gone with the nice cars, mm-hmm. and you're literally sitting in a bus stop. And what are you thinking? Well, I was visiting a, uh, my best friend from high school's cousin at, at a bar, um, and she was working. And then I was just like going to stay with another friend because I couch surfed as okay. soon as I left rehab. Got it. And um, I was going to another friend's house. And then I just, you know me, I talk to everyone. Yeah. That's how I am. Right. So I just was talking to people at the bus stop and that's how I met Joe. So Joe says to you, um, hey, I got a place if you want to hang out for a while and just kind of. No, it didn't go like that. How did you know, it go? It took a while. Okay, you know, just, so you were at other places surfing, right. and then you got to know Joe, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and yep. then Joe said, why don't you just move in with me? Well, not really. I tried it. I kind of forced it. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you were in love with Joe? Um, I don't think we're in love, but we like each other a lot. You think if I asked Joe if they're, you're in love, he'd say he is? I, you don't know. Okay. Yep. But how long have you been together? A year? Eight months. Mm-hmm. It's interesting because you had, when I was with you in uh, on Deal or No Deal, you had a long distance boyfriend. Right, Jono. Um, he lived in New York. Yeah, he's still there and we're still best friends and everything. So is the goal with Joe to get married? I don't want to marry anybody. Do you? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I, I want to marry Joe. <laughs> <laughs> he's my type. I'm looking for daddy. <laughs> but you saw him first. Yeah, I'm not, I don't want to get married. Why? I don't know. Maybe I need to work that out when I go to therapy. Huh? Right. Yeah. I don't, it's not a thing for me, I don't think. Okay. Yeah. Can I play therapist for a minute? You do it with me all the time. You've been doing it for like an hour now. Okay. Here's what I think. Okay. I think that you have an issue with intimacy. Uh-huh. And I think that perhaps, and of course I would never pretend to know, because we haven't talked that much over the years, uh-huh. but- you had a long-distance relationship with a guy in New York. You didn't see that often. Right. I did. I was balling back then. So okay. I would go to New York all the time. Or well, he was, nevertheless, it was long-distance. Yeah, yeah, okay? definitely. You weren't seeing him every week. Right. My record. Or not every day. Yeah, yeah. And it was a long time uh-huh. you were with him. Uh-huh. How many years were you with him? It was right after my... And it happened right after my dad died. So you broke up? No, 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 no. That we got together. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And I knew when my dad died... Something said, you know what? You need somebody to be there for you. That's me analyzing myself. Okay. Yeah. Well, you have this long distance relationship, uh-huh. which isn't ideal for intimacy because uh-huh. you're not day to day. Right. Now you have, I don't know who you've been with between then and now, but now you have a gentleman who is quite older than you. Uh-huh. And there might be, there is also perhaps a built in block of intimacy. Uh-huh. So, you know, you, maybe, I have no idea because it's just two relationships, maybe you pick relationships that deep down you know are going to be fun, but you're not going to be ultimately vulnerable or destroyed if they end. Right. Ooh. And that then you cheat yourself. Well, because maybe from being hurt, you don't want to be hurt anymore. 
you kind of like block stuff. Right, but it doesn't work. Oh, no. Because you end up not getting, you know, ultimately what probably the soul needs, don't you think? At least for me. I mean, everyone's okay. different. Uh huh. Now, Joe's a great guy. Joe's like, screw you. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we make were born this in the same hospital. In Brooklyn. Just different centuries. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to kill me. He's gonna actually. Kill me too. He's a really nice guy. <laughs> I mean, I will say that. A different century. <laughs> He's a really good guy. <laughs> yes. He yeah. is. Uh, so do you see this being like something that could last for a long time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Does he have a life insurance policy? <laughs> this could be a good thing. <laughs> it's a fair question. Are you take? you know, you need to get, are you like on the policy and you're like taking him out, getting him to smoke? I'm like, and what's that bank account number again? <laughs> Hey, baby, walk out in front of this car. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You have him drink a lot and smoke a lot. and yeah. well, We have a good time. We enjoy each other. And it's like, I think God put us together for a reason right. at this point yeah. in our lives. Now, he's white, right? He's a white guy. The last time I checked, he was, yes. So you, yeah. um, is this... And I, I think I, I've been black for about 50-something years. Is this the first white guy you've ever been out with? Me? No. No? Is that your thing? No, I love all kinds of people. Doesn't matter. Mm. So you didn't answer my question. Do you call him daddy in the bedroom? No, I don't call him daddy in the bedroom. Does he call you my little girl? <laughs> Can I just tell you? He calls me Allison. Oh, that's sweet. You know okay. what? I, that's good. I, one time, um, I was with a woman and she was African-American. and she, she was. She probably still is. She's, well, I don't know. It's been a while. So <laughs> okay. she wanted to uh, role play uh -huh. and she wanted me to call her dad. Uh, she was calling me daddy. <laughs> so... And she wanted me to play this out. I'm like, you've been daddy. a bad... Yeah, she's calling me daddy. That's and, weird to me, daddy. Yeah, like women, some women like that. Okay. Where they're making love, they like to pretend that... It's like okay. a taboo. I don't know. I got gotcha, you. So, that's weird for me. Yeah, I okay. mean, so, so I'm like, she's like, oh, daddy, daddy. Um, I go, <laughs> I go, you, you know... Were I go, you a lot older than her? No. Okay. No, not, not tremendously, no. Okay. So, um, but it was so funny because it was her idea to do this role play. Okay. And then she goes to me while we're having sex, she goes, Daddy, why are you white? <laughs> I'm like, this was your role play, I'm thinking. I go, like, well, you came up with this. Right. Okay. I'm like, yeah, now you're throwing like uh, things at me to okay. make it not work. I'm why like, well, are you white? <laughs> I'm like, well, mommy's black and I'm white and you're, you're like half black and half white. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> But where were you supposed to go with that? Right. I mean, she's okay. like creating the roadblocks and obstacles okay. to this like role play that supposedly is a turn around. And I had to like come <laughs> okay. up with some complicated or not, you know, some excuse. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So you've got this acting going. Um, what's, a little bit. Not really acting. I'm where are they, Where can they it. see you? We had, I asked if they, okay. is there something online? There's something online right now called Bird's Court and it's on YouTube. Okay. And it's. Just uh, how it sounds. B-I-R-D-S. Court. Yes. And One it, word or two? Two words. Okay. And it's on YouTube, and these guys from Philly, they write it. And it's all about, I think at one point, the Philadelphia Eagles had a court at the stadium. And it's kind of based on that and these crazy antics, because the Eagle fans are nuts. Is there more than one episode? Yes, there's three. And yes. which one are you in? I'm in the one called Probable Clause. Check that out. <laughs> Check that out, everyone. Now, okay. is this where you'd like to go with your career? Um, As an actress? An actress and also producer, writer. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, and I've always been a producer, writer. So mm -hmm. I want to do stuff in front of the camera too. Yeah. Well, I think that you've got an amazing story. Okay. Thank you really you. do. Mm -hmm. And I think you do have a book. Mm -hmm. Right. You know? It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, but I think by the time it's written, uh, you're going to be in a different place. And yeah. I think something is going to work. Yeah, because also it's a, a progression. Just because it didn't work right then in the 90 days doesn't mean... It's not going to. Also, you know. people, it's very common for people to go to rehab more than once. And, right. Uh, you know, right. and it takes what it takes. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, yeah. and, uh, you know, I, I hope you get to that place. Right. Just because you've got a lot to offer the world. Sure. I'm getting there. You've got such good and energy. And this helped me. When you called me, thank you. Oh, you, you know. know what? You <laughs> are, um, not to be over the top here, but you're a bright light. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. it's interesting because, like, the people who who often suffer the most, you know, we don't see that. But that's comedians. You know, yeah. They, you know, often, yeah. you know. Yeah, you right, know. yeah. And uh, they often are the brightest lights. Mm -hmm. But inside they're like, ugh, going bananas. At times. Yeah. But, you know, when, um, when, when there's laughter mm -hmm. 
it just all washes away. Right. Yeah. And it feels like this amazing connection of love. Mm-hmm. That's all right, bit. Oprah. Don't you think so? <laughs> okay. That's Oprah, how I feel. Oprah Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how many times I've been called that. No. <laughs> okay. Never. So um, how can people get a hold of you if they would like to... Uh, I don't know, say hi, be your friend on Facebook uh, in case Joe doesn't work out. They want to date you. <laughs> Sorry, Joe. <laughs> Joe's so pissed right now. He's here, actually. That's why I keep saying that. He's on the couch over there. I'm there probably going to be on the box under the 10 after this interview. No, Thanks God forbid. You. God forbid. You've done nothing wrong. <laughs> Joe should be very proud of you. You've been very honest, yeah. and it's been great. And it's been, it helped me, so Good. thank you. It's helped me, you know? honestly. Okay. So how can people find you? I mean, I'm on uh, Facebook. I okay, know. it's yeah. Allison, A-L-L-I-S-O-N. Uh, uh-huh. And then Barksdale. B-A-R-K-S-D-A-L-E. You know, I could see you also public speaking. Uh, I could see you, um, you know, about your experience. Uh-huh. But I think you need to still get out the other end. Yeah. Because if you don't like, stop drinking, right aren't now. you worried about yourself a little bit? No. Because we met in a bar before this. <laughs> you were drinking. Yeah. What were you drinking? Wine. Okay. Yeah. But like... Usually at this time, I'd be cocked out of my gourd. I'd be like, oh, just all drunk up. You know, so I'm getting there. So you believe you might be an alcoholic who can drink? No, you're no. not supposed. If you're an alcoholic, and well, you that's what I'm steps, wondering. It's like no, you're not supposed to. Right. But let me do my thing. Do you find that you stir blacking out every now and then? Not anymore. No. Since your rehab? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's a progression. Do you find that Joe? Uh, you you know you can get codependent on Joe. I probably am. We're probably codependent on each other. To save you? Oh, definitely he did. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah. it's a good thing. I needed it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm. I I think that um, codependency is a challenge. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it's by nature healthy mm-hmm. for the long term. So who is this uh, black man dingo you want that's coming in here to rescue me to make me not drink it? <laughs> okay. Well, no one's going to no one's gonna rescue you. That's exactly. the whole thing. It's going to have to come from within. Well, stop beating up Joe. Shoot. I love Joe. <laughs> I'm not, that's not a knock on Joe. That's not a knock on but Joe. But I love how you went there. What do you it's mean? It's so funny that I said, okay, I'm bringing somebody with me. You're like, okay. Well, I'm going to have to ask about it. <laughs> and I said to Joe, he's going to be shocked. And he goes, well, he worked with you. He knows you're a nut. And I'm Listen, like, Joe, I, I, he's shocked. I think you guys are, you know what, whatever makes you happy. I mean, yeah. he's a really nice guy. <laughs> And you know what? He's hope for every older guy that he might be able to find an adorable younger woman. I mean, he's kind of a stud. I'm a cute young chippy. No, he's like that's like what he a, calls me. Well, he's just kind of a stud. You're you're a beautiful woman. You really thank are. You, Nick. you just call me Nick. Vic. I said thank you. Vic. Okay. Well, you really I know are, your name. No. Okay. Oh, thank you. You are a beautiful woman, and he's lucky to have you. Okay. And he is hope for any guy in his seventies. <laughs> but there, you may find an Allison out there. Okay, another kook. Listen, we have to run. Okay. Can you believe the whole hour is just about up? I was going to give you a, a present. You were? Yeah. Really? Uh, well, let's hold off on okay. it. <laughs> I think okay. I know. Because we got so deep into the other stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay, give it to me real quick and okay. we'll we'll move. G- well, give me. How do you feel about my hair? You know I love your hair. Okay. And it's, it's kind of your trademark in a way, isn't okay. it? Well, you had a weave, didn't you? I had a weave. I mean, like something. This one's a wig. Okay. I I didn't know you wore wigs till you told me recently. For some reason, I'm very naive. I have my hair, but here's one for you. Oh, this is great. That's Brenda. Is this for real? It's it's really a wig. Is this real hair? Well, it's really wig hair. I mean, like, is it, like, where did it come from, Joe? (laughs) (laughs) It's Joe's chest hair. I always say, like, I grow this out every year. Well, you have to put it on real quick. All right, all right. Listen, it won't be funny. Thank you again, Allison. I'm going to put this on. I'm going to say goodbye to all of you, everyone. Again, Allison Barksdale, thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Vic. And good luck with everything. I look forward to your acting career. I know you're going to be great. Thank you. And um, thank you guys uh, for watching. (laughs) You can find... What do you feed it, by the way? (laughs) You can find uh, me on iTunes. Please subscribe. We've got over 60 episodes, some really great ones, just like tonight. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everybody. I'm Vic Cohen, and it's a fair question. It's a fair question. It's a fair question. How's that look? I'm Vic Cohen, and it's a fair question. It's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair question. I'm Vic Cohen, and it's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair, it's a fair question.